In this presentation, we will continue on with part six of our partnership comprehensive problem. This time we're going to be entering the balance sheet, ending balance information into our tax return, into our software, that being LACERT. LACERT owned by Intuit, the data input process and generation of the forms will be similar with other tax software as well. Here is the form 1065 that we have so far. You'll recall that page one is basically going to be the income statement portion. We're going to be looking at the balance sheet portion, which will be page five. So we scroll on down to page five. That's going to be our schedule L. You'll recall we entered the beginning balances into the schedule L. Now we're going to enter the ending balances for our balance sheet. Now the balance sheet is going to be fairly straightforward to do because there's usually less numbers for it. However, we do have some areas that are populated for us already, that being the depreciation and the property plant and equipment. So we have to verify if those are correct. Uh, and if they're not, then we have to think about, okay, what are we going to do in that situation? Because I'd like to be in balance first and then move forward from there. So let's go back and consider this information. I'm going to go to the data input screen. We're going to go to the balance sheet. We're going to go to the balance sheet up top and the federal. I'm going to go back over. We're going to go then to our trial balance. Now I'm going to enter this from the trial balance this time. Uh, to do that, I really want to look at only the, the last row of numbers. I want to be as easy on my eyes as possible. So I'm going to actually hide from N to Q. So I'm going to put my cursor on N. I'm going to go all the way to Q, let go, right click on the selected area and hide. So now we got our numbers up top and we're going to put them directly into the system from the trial balance. So cash is going to be first. And, and note, if you have a trial balance and the financial statements, the trial balance will typically give you more detail. So you have to think about which would, might be easier to input from. Do you want the more condensed financial statements or will it be necessary to have the more detailed kind of trial balance as you do the data input? Uh, here it's pretty much, it's pretty similar. So we're going to go back over. I'm going to go, all right, we're going to go to the cash. We're at the ending cash and the ending cash is going to be the 326445. So I'm going to say this is 326445. Then we're going to be in the accounts receivable. The accounts receivable is going to be the 57,000. So I'm going to say this is 57,000. Then we have the inventories. Now, again, the inventories are going to be in the cost of goods sold schedule. We haven't put that in yet. Therefore, I'm basically going to force the inventories at this point, that being the 50,000. So that's going to be the 50,000. Next, we have the prepaid assets. I'm going to put that into the other current assets, and that's going to be for 50,000 it was. And then next, we have the uh, interest in tax-exempt bonds. So interest in tax-exempt bonds is here, and that's going to be... Uh, 20,000 investment in tax exempt bonds, I believe it was 20,000. And then we have the investment in common stocks, 30,000. So that's going to be, I'm going to put that into other current assets. We're going to go in here and say that's going to be the 30,000 investment and okay. And then we'll go back and see what we have next. Now, now we have the equipment and accumulated depreciation. Now, typically, if you're entering this into the system, you're going to go back over here and you're going to go, I'm going to go to the forms and hope that this is turning out okay because I entered this into the system or I rolled it forward last time and hopefully there were no purchases or sales and if there weren't then you know this might then then the equipment might roll out even though the depreciate the accumulated depreciation may or may not so but here no not no such luck we're at the 315 and the 161 so that means something else is going on in the system so that means oh okay there must have been a sale or a purchase of equipment and there's not always a sale or purchase of equipment because you know those are big ticket items so um you know there's not too many sales or purchases in, in the big dollar amount items so that means that we're going to say all right there, we're going to have to come back to this but right now i'm going to force it to work and then we'll come back and fix it so i'm going to go back over here and i'm going to say let's make it work now so i can reconcile at least and then come back and fix it so i'm going to go ahead and make these yellow i'm going to say all right these are going to need to be changed I'm going to make this 300,000 and 135,000. So this is going to be the 300,000 and 135,000. And of course, again, this is 300,000. That means, well, something must have been sold. And there could have been multiple transactions that have happened here. But this is lower than it was before. So you think, ah, something was sold there. We're going to have to deal with that. We'll have to dig in there somewhere. So we're going to go back up to the forms. And let's see if we if we tie out now. These have then changed. That looks good. 
we're at the 698.445. If I go back over here and I was to highlight these down to here, debits minus the credit, 698.445. Assets look good. Let's then go to the liabilities, 45,500 in the accounts payable. Scrolling back over to the detail, we're going to say we've got the 45,000. Is that what it was? 45,000? I think it was 45,500. 45,500. 500. And then we're going to say that uh, we have the notes payable of the 50. So that's going to be the 50 here. Okay. And then we've got the capital, which is going to be down below. So we've got the capital which is going to be uh next now now note hopefully the capital should roll over and tie out at the end of the day but it because what we have here we want the system to calculate the capital if i go back up to the forms then and scroll down we've got the beginning capital at the 397667 and the ending capitals at the 356 now this isn't going to tie out yet but we want to let the system basically calculate it because uh, that's going to give us our double check. What's it going to include in the calculation? Well, it's going to have the beginning balances plus the net income minus the distributions. So that's going to be the calculation. Now we could put it in there and force it just to see if we're in balance first, just to see if I hit, if I entered all the other numbers into the balance sheet correctly. So I can go down here and say, all right, let's force it for now. And we're going to say basically the whole ending balance should be all of this, which you can also found, find on the balance sheet. That's at the 602945. So that's going to be the 602945 should put us in balance. And we can also see that uh, in, the, in the ending balances here. If you went to the, to the balance sheet and I was to go to the current year by unhiding these cells from C over to F, right click those cells and unhide the ending balance here is going to be the 602945 what does that consist of the prior year balance plus any or minus the distributions prior year balance plus prior year balance minus the distributions plus income minus all the expenses should give us the same 602945 602945 602945 back here 602945 Go into the forms then we see the 602945 here and if we force that then the total assets are indeed equal to the liabilities and equity so it looks right right everything everything looks like it, it's tying out and the balance sheet if you spend a little bit of time on it you might have to tick and tie uh, for a while but it should be fairly straightforward because there's not too many numbers involved in it so if you force it to work by overriding things like we have here then you should be able to check all the things that are not overridden that they are okay what i'm going to do now is go back and unforce this number and then as we go through the the data input process next time putting in the income statement then we're, we're going to come back to this number and, and hope and figure it out right so i'm going to unforce this number i'm going to go back over and say all right i'm going to not i'm going to unforce that I'm going to go back over I'm out of balance now. So I'm out of balance, but I know that this number is the number that's wrong. I'm then going to go in. I'm going to enter the data for the income statement, page one. And I'm going to force, I'm going to get that to basically tie out. And then I'll enter the distributions. And then once those two things are in place, the tax return should be able to take this beginning number and get us to the ending number properly. And once that's good, that you know that's a significant achievement towards finishing the return if we get that all to tie out so that's what we'll start with next time